Welcome back. Um, we're going to continue reading Chocolate Fever, where our main character, Henry Green, loves to eat chocolate. Lots and lots of chocolate. He eats at breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, uh, after school snacks. He takes the little Hershey kisses, or sorry, just kisses, in his pocket to munch on while at school. He just loves chocolate. Um, he wakes up one morning fine, and he goes to leave for school. He feels kind of weird, but he doesn't know why. Even when his best friend asks him what's wrong, he couldn't tell him. He didn't know. While in math class with Miss Kimmelfarber, that's a cool name, uh, with Miss Kimmelfarber, she asked him a question, and his answer was little brown spots all over, which we come to find out are little brown spots all over his arm and hands, which were not there when he left for school. The teacher asked if there were freckles. He said no. Um, then he went. she went and got another teacher who said they were freckles. And that's when they noticed they were all over his face. And they weren't there even two minutes before when the teachers were looking. And lastly, they smelled chocolate in the air. They don't know where it's from, but they did smell chocolate. So, we're going to continue with Chocolate Fever in Chapter 4. Chapter 4. Pop. Dirt breeds great germs, Nurse Molly Farthing would often say, and germs have a nasty way of making healthy people ill. Naturally, the infirmary of PS123 was always spotless because Nurse Molly Farthing wouldn't have it any other way. And naturally, as Miss Kimmelfarber and Henry rushed through the door that many morning, she made both of them go back and wipe their feet on the mat. And don't bring any of your cocoa in here, Nurse Farthing added. She sniffed the air loudly. Cocoa, said Miss Kimmelfarber. Don't think I don't smell it, Nurse Farthing said. Please, Nurse Far Farthing, said Miss Kimmelfarber. We have an emergency on our hands. This is Henry Green. He's breaking out in a rash of some sort. So I see, said Nurse Farthing. She sat Henry down in a chair and turned on the bright light. Pushing her spectacles down on the tip of her nose, she bent close to Henry and looked him over. It's a rash, all right, she said at last. Peculiar. Looks like little brown spots all over. Exactly, Miss Kimmel Farber said. But what is it? Have you have you ever had measles? Nurse Farthing asked. Yes, said Henry, when I was five. Chicken pox? When I was three and a half. Then I would say you have an unidentified rash, and frankly, I don't like the looks of it. Henry, who up until now was merely frightened, began to feel terrified. Nurse Farthing laid her cool hand on his arm and steadied him. There, there, dear, she said. Nothing to be frightened of. I'm sure it's not serious. How do you feel? Not very good, said Henry. Warm? No. Cold? No. Dizzy? No, said Henry. I just feel strange. You poor dear, said Nurse Molly Farthing. You really must be frightened. She ran her fingers through her hair, through his hair, and patted on the back of Henry's neck. Somehow this made him feel a little better. Pop! Did you say something? asked Nurse Farthing. No, ma'am, said Henry. Pop! What is that noise then? she asked. It sounds like something's going pop. I heard it too, said Henry. So did I, said Miss Kimmel Farber. Pop, pop, pop. Now they all heard it. The sound of popping filled the infirmary. Little pops and bigger pops and poppity pop pops and keep popping. Henry looked at his arm and in, a, in an instant knew where the noise was coming from. His little brown spots were growing bigger and bigger and they were popping out all over him. No longer the size of freckles, they were as big as the chocolate bits his mother used him for making cakes and cookies. He could feel them popping out on his arms, his face, he could feel them growing under his skin. In less time than it takes to tell it, Henry Green was covered with little brown lumps from the top of his head to the tip of his toes. So there's Nurse Molly Farthing looking at Henry and his little brown spots popping out everywhere like popcorn. Alright, so 
chapter four. I mean, the name of the chapter kind of gave everything away. Pop. Uh, who did Henry go see? Nurse Molly Farthing. Um, can you remember what did she thought they? What did she think they brought in? And why did she think that? She thought they brought in Coco to her nice clean office and she didn't want them to bring it in. And when they said they didn't have it, she said that she smelled it. So once again, we have that chocolate smell in the air. Then what happened to Henry's little brown spots? Yep, they were popping out more, make, becoming bigger. Not popping open, just making them bigger. And they were actually making pop sounds. And all three of them heard the popping. So he was covered with the lumps from the top of his head to the tip of his toes. Alrighty. Chapter 5. In later years, Henry couldn't remember who screamed first. All he could recall was that both he and Miss Kimmel Farber were yelling their heads off, and that Nurse Molly Farthing was as cool as a cantaloupe. Calm down now, both of you, she said. Miss Kimmel Farber, you go and call Miss Green on the telephone. Tell her we're taking Henry to the city hospital. Miss Kimmel Farber didn't move. She just stood there with her mouth open, staring at Henry. You scoot now, insisted Miss Farthing in a stern tone. Shush, off with you. Are you, Henry Green, she said as Miss Farward left the room. Are you coming with me? Let us go, quietly and calmly. She took his hand, and once again, Henry noticed that it felt good and somehow made him feel better. He kept holding her cool hand as they left the school, all the way to the hospital as the taxi sped along. Henry held fast to the calm, steady hand of Nurse Molly Farthing. In fact, it wasn't until he had checked by the two different doctors and was waiting to be examined by the hospital chief of children's medicine, did Dr. Fargo, that he dared to let go. What? 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 said Dr. Fargo as he came bounding into the examining room. He was a small round man with a bushy white mustache and a confused look on his face. What have we here, eh? he asked. Boy, looks like he fell in a mud puddle. He leaned down so close to Henry's nose that Henry could smell his puffy breath. It smelled like peppermints. He didn't fall in a mud puddle, did you, lad? No, sir. Didn't think so, said Dr. Fargo. Too bad. He would have explained all those brown, big brown spots all over you. Well then, he said, turning to Nurse Molly Farthing. Tell me things. You're not going to believe this, doctor, Nurse Farthing began, as she told Dr. Fargo about the events of the morning. I'm not going to believe this, Dr. Fargo repeated when she had finished. It's impossible. No rash in the whole history of rashes have ever appeared so fast, or grew so big, or popped out with a noise you could hear. Impossible. It happened, said Nurse Farthing. So I see. Well, soon, well, we'll soon get to the bottom of this, or my name's not, er, what is my name, by the way? Dr. Fargo, I believe, said Henry. Pleased to meet you, son, said Dr. Fargo, and he shook Henry's hand. Ought to do something about those big brown spots, though. Yes, sir, said Henry, who was beginning to feel confused himself. Dr. Fargo took Henry to the examining table and switched on the big lamp. For a full five minutes, he said nothing but, hmm, and ha, huh, as he poked and prodded Henry. He looked at every big brown spot and all the bare spots in between the brown spots. He looked at the magnifying glass and without a magnifying glass, and Henry's eyes and ears and nose and even under his tongue. Finally, he said, I don't know any more than what I started. They ju look just like your typical big brown spots. Except, of course, in the whole history of the civilized world, there's never been a case of big brown spots before. I'm frightened, said Henry. I'm Dr. Fargo, said the doctor. That much I know. Now, what I'd like to do is to get to know more about these brown spots of yours. He wet the tip of a cotton swab and brushed it gently against one of the big brown spots on Henry's right arm. Ouch, said Henry. Did that hurt? No. Then why did you say ouch? Because, said Henry, I thought it was going to hurt. I see, said Dr. Fargo, shaking his head. He put the cotton swab into a glass jar 
Take this to the laboratory at once, he said to one of his assistants, and the man rushed out of the room. In a few minutes, we'll know more about those big brown spots of yours, the doctor said. Hand behind his back, he began to pace the room. Suddenly, he stopped, his nose in the air. Who has been eating a candy bar in my office, he demanded. No one answered. Dr. Fargo's nose twitched from side to side as he sniffed the air. I smell candy, he said. Someone's been eating a candy bar. Okay, there's Henry laying on the, the observation table with all the doctors, the nurses, and assistants looking at him. Just then the telephone rang, and Dr. Fargo bomb bounded across the room to answer it. What? What? He said into the phone. Are you sure? His white mustache bounced up and down as Dr. Fargo sank slowly into his chair. He put the telephone down, a look of amazement on his face. Chocolate, he said. Those big brown spots are pure chocolate. Chocolate, he gasped, gasped Miss Nurse Farthing. Chocolate, exclaimed Henry Green. Chocolate, echoed Dr. Fargo's two assistants. Exactly, said Dr. Fargo. The boy, it seems, is nothing more than a walking candy bar. Right, that's the end of chapter five. Um, we met Dr. Fargo, the doctor, and he doesn't believe them, right? Right, he says that no history, no rash in the history no one has ever been that fast or made a popping sound. But he still examined our Henry. And then what do you do? He used the cotton swab to get a little bit on there and sent it to the lab to find out what the rash was. Then he smelled something. He smelled chocolate. He asked who was eating candy in his office. Nobody eats candy in his office. But when the phone rang in the lab, called him back and told him what the, the brown spots were. What were they? They were pure chocolate. All right, so. He has little chocolate brown spots popping up all over his body. So, chapter six, catch that boy. Sounds like something serious is gonna happen here. There was more excitement than Henry had ever seen. All kinds of doctors were examining him now, poking and prodding as if they were not a boy, but a pincushion. And Dr. Fargo was bounding about the room, talking about chocolate fever, a new disease, making medical history and things like that. He was tired and afraid. He wanted to be left alone. He wanted all the doctors to go away. He wanted to be home. He wanted, in fact, to be just about any place in the world except this hospital. So he did something very simple, something his heart told him he had to do to survive. He jumped off the examining table and began to run. In a flash, he had bolted through the doorway and running down the long corridor behind him, he heard shouts of stop and Catch that boy. Two nurses at the end of the corridor tried to catch him, but Henry was simply too quick. He dodged past them, darted down the stairway. Down, down, down he went. Down. Three whole flights of stairs and out into the main lobby of the hospital. Ahead of him, as a guard at the door held out his, an arm, running as hard as he could, Henry crashed through his grasp and into the street. Without pausing to think where he was headed, Henry ran. As he was about to turn the corner, he looked back. There was a whole army of people pursuing him. Doctors in white coats, nurses, guards, blowing whistles, policemen waving their arms, and behind them he could see Dr. Fargo. All right, so there they all are, running after Henry, running down the street. Henry didn't want to see any more. Legs, he said, don't fail me now. And with that, he turned the corner and took off down the street. He ran and ran until he had no breath left, and then he ran some more, his legs flashing in the afternoon sun. Henry darted down one street and up another. He had no idea where he was. He had no idea where he was going. But still, he kept running. People stared at him as he whizzed by. A few even raised their hands as if to stop him or say something. But Henry kept right on running. After a long while, he couldn't see or hear any of the people running after him. 
I must be far ahead of them by now, Henry thought. But suddenly, up ahead at the corner, a police car flashed by with a siren screaming. They must be after me, he thought with alarm. I'm a wanted man. Sick at heart, Henry pushed himself to run faster. His head hurt, his side hurt, his legs hurt, but he kept running. His lungs hurt, his eyes hurt, even his hair began to hurt, but Henry kept running. At last he could run no more. He was finished, done. He had to rest, and he had to rest. And to rest, he had to hide. Without thinking about it, Henry down a large grassy alley that lay between two white houses. At the end of the alley was a large garage with one door partly open. Henry sneaked in and looked around. There was an automobile parked inside, but not a person in sight. With his last bit of strength, he flopped down on the floor beside the automobile. Fine mess you're in now, he thought. You run away from a hospital, the police are after you, your mother must be scared to death with worry, and you have a disease no one has ever heard of before. The more he thought about his predicament, the sadder hit Henry became. A lump rose in his throat, a tear ran down his cheek, a sob escaped from his lips, and he was crying, sobbing out loud, really crying. He cried for a moment because he was so sad. He cried some more because he was lost. And then he cried for a long, long time because everything had become so hopeless. At last, when he couldn't cry no more, Henry dried his eyes and tried to think about think out of his situation. He would not go back to Dr. Fargo in the hospital. Of that, he was certain. Nothing on Earth or any other planet could make him do that. But what if he went home? What would his mother and father do? They would take him back to Dr. Fargo in the hospital. They would have to. Never, said Henry aloud. Never, never, never. In the dim light of the garage, Henry looked at the big brown spots on his arm and began to hate them. Stupid spots, he thought. Why did you have to happen to me? Feeling angry, he stood up and began to pace in the half-empty garage. Can't go home, he thought, and I won't go back to the hospital. All right, then. I'm on my own. Somewhere there must be a place for me. A place to go until these stupid big brown spots disappear. A place far away where no one has ever heard of me or the hospital or Dr. Fargo or my parents. Feeling much braver now, with things somehow settled in his mind, Harry laid down to rest for a while before setting off on his journey. Alright, that's the end of chapter 6. So, you've heard the first, what Dr. Uh, Fargo named Henry's new ailment. What was that? Chocolate fever. Henry has chocolate fever. It's a new one. Nothing like it in the history of medical science ever. So he was very excited. Henry and Henry wasn't excited. And so what did he do? He ran away. He ran as far as he could to get away from the doctors and the police and everything. Um, where did he hide? Yep, he hid in a garage. And he decided he couldn't go home and he couldn't go back to the hospital and he couldn't go to Dr. Fargo. So he came up with a plan, but we don't know what it is yet. And we will save that for the next video. So, see you then.